Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report, where we talk about the latest uh, news items in the superhero film and TV genre. Today's show, it's uh, going to be a little bit of a follow-up to last week's show, because we've had some recent updates. And uh, joining me to discuss is Mr. Brian Schultz. What's going on, Brian? How much? Always good to be here, Pablo. Good, good, good to have you back. Um, we have quite a few things to discuss. First, we'll discuss Michael B. Jordan. I'm happy about what's happening with Michael B. Jordan. Uh, number two, we're going to discuss the Justice League spotted on the Batman film set. Right? Then we're going to go into what Sony, what we thought was going to happen if it wasn't already confirmed, which was uh, Sony denying the recent rumors of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield signing up to do the Spider-Verse. And then we're going to go into, which will be the follow-up to our previous discussion with Disney and what they are doing, their new business. First, Michael B. Jordan is producing Static Shock. Now, when I first saw it, I sent it to Brian. Uh, I thought they were picking him to be stat Static Shock. They were gonna, he was going to be the lead. And I was like, come on, right? And then I read that he's producing. And I was happy about that. You know why I was happy, Brian? Because he's not, at least I don't think, going to look at this property and go cha-ching. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. No chance. And the release lets you know that. Yeah. So I feel he's going to do what Marvel has been doing and or attempting to do with Miss Marvel. Because, you know, Spider-Man is the head honcho when it comes to popular, young, teenagers, that demographic. Um, who is this? Is Disney has DC done any other character, a young character, teenage character with superheroes? As a lead, no. I mean, do you consider like Titans? I mean, there's younger iterations of individuals, but no, this concept, I would say, is a little different. And it also the fact that this is not a totally new character. We've seen this in animated form, right? In, in a very successful animated form, albeit. That's, you know, that's where I was introduced to Static Shock right there. I never read the comics, but I saw the show. I liked the show. Uh, how many seasons was it? I think it was four. I think there were over 50 shows all told in that. Yeah. So. And he, he popped up in Justice League. Yep. I was happy about when he popped up in those shows and when they went into the future. He's a grown dude. You know, and he's static shock. So that was dope. Uh, but go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think I think it's important on a couple of levels. And I agree with you about Michael B. Jordan in the production role. I think I think we're we're obviously seeing progress on representation here. But in, in the earlier innings of this, it's going to be important for the people who have star power, who have name, who have recognition to back projects like this because they're going to be the only ones who can get funding and get these off the grounds and so yes. and they don't need to star in them for this to work so i think it's important for michael b jordan i think he said it right in the press release about the social significance of having you know honoring a show like this and honoring a character that has already existed and saying hey, i can bring that i can modernize that i can make it on a bigger scale for audiences today and i don't have to be that character it's not all about me it's about kind of the the message and the mission and the story so yeah, two thumbs up. I mean, 100% would like it and hope we see more of it from the actors, producers, and directors who are in a position to do this with um, people of color and sort of shows and characters that can fit into that. Do you agree with the notion that they're sort of following along, following along the same path with introducing new characters outside of Spider-Man and making them popular? Yeah, no, I, I, I do. Um, and I think there's well, another thing. Let me throw another one in there. OK, are they trying to beat them with, you know, are they trying to beat Miles Morales? Oh. I like to think there's room in the world for both of those. Two of ones. course. So I, I hope it's not that I hope it's not a, an internal viewpoint of the marketplace is only big enough for one 
minority lead kind of character of this type and we have to be first to market. I really hope it's not that. Yeah. I hope it's much more about bringing superheroes of all you know backgrounds and ethnicities to the audiences that are ready to receive them and have been ready for a long time and are ready to say i hope it's really it, i hope it's really that simple i do have to drop a sony tidbit in here sorry can i work okay, this okay, in okay yeah, yeah sure so there's a there's a new book out the big picture by ben fritz it talks about how marvel changed the movie industry and the research is based on the leaked sony emails the, the hack the sony hack that occurred that dumped all of that information so I did not know this, maybe you were aware of this. So in the late nineties when Marvel was bankrupt and they sold, Sony wanted Spider-Man and offered $10 million for the character. Marvel said, yes. Marvel said for 25, you can have the entire universe and Sony passed. Wow. So for 15 million bucks, Sony could have had the entire MCU in the late nineties and they said no. Wow. Like that's the equivalent of in 1983, David Fox saying you could have Michael Jordan for 20 years on the league minimum. And you saying, pass, I'm not interested. Wow. And then watching what played out, how the world would be different. Think about that. So anyway, that I can't so, even I can't even I can't even fathom not having what we have now. They will spend the rest of eternity trying to make up for that miss yeah. at that moment in time. Yeah. So yes. And, and, and I guess, and I hope this gives people some sort of insight to say that there was no way that Sony was going to separate themselves from Marvel. All that back and forth was just business negotiation. That's all it was. That's Absolutely. all it was. There at the end of the day, what they resolved is perhaps close to what they wanted on both sides and they and they realized they need each other in this respect so and the, the numbers are simple they make a lot more money doing it this way and better movies mean more box so if kevin feige has a voice in that that's a small price to pay for the amount of box you can generate off these characters and, and having good people behind the building of new characters you know yeah. i i hope you know kevin being involved in the Spider Woman movie that Olivia Wilde is rumored to be is, is supposed to be direct. Like, great. I hope it works. I mean, if those are quality talents. Same with this. Michael B. Jordan, Static Shock. It, it, it's it's a different you know idea, but yeah, it's the same idea. It's like you want to get those characters in good hands onto the screen because then we all win and everyone makes money. Hoping, I'm hoping that when that movie is done and is ready for release that theaters are open to some capacity, whether or not they feel like they have a, let's say billion dollar film on their hands and they want to wait out however long for, do you think they'll wait for that time when it's time to come back? Or do you think they release that on HBO Max, get those subscribers? I think a property like this, it's it's open for discussion. I don't think they draw a line in the sand. I think with proven characters, you know, Spider Man, even Venom, you know, because whatever we think of it, that did a lot of box. Um, those characters will be reserved as long as possible for the movie theater. Something like this, I, I don't think. I mean, we'll talk about it later. I think in maybe our Superman discussion, but I don't think there's a reason you can go back. You can't go back and forth. Like if you want to build the audience and build the interest for the character on HBO Max and the and the viewership and the is so high why can't you then pivot that into a film for the sequel or for down the road i don't think you can i don't think there's any reason you can't trade and change the mediums yeah so listen i'm excited i hope this movie opens the doors to a bunch more characters icon yep blue marvel yep I can't wait to see these characters. These characters have great story. I, when I listen, I'm not a comic book reader. Just to let you guys know, I am not a comic book reader. I read comics, but not, you know, like some people I know, which by the way, in November, we have a special guest. He's older than me. He still reads comics every week. He's collecting comics. Mr. Alex Bernstein, 
who's a writer, comedian. Um, he's written on some kid shows. Um, so maybe you and I have seen him. I don't know. But when I read the history of Blue Marvel and the events that transpired there opens the door to a whole new world and, and new characters that we haven't we haven't even touched on yet, you right. know, and we're not going to go there, but just to let you, th there's, if you hear those names being talked about, trust me. And, and I have heard some rumors about blue Marvel, but they're not concrete enough for me to even discuss. I hope that's something that they do next up. So when I saw it, I was like, I wasn't like, Although it did sort of uh, take me back to the moment where I said this could be the beginning of this universe. The Justice League was spotted on the film set of Batman. Yep. Sort of. Um, if you're like me and watch John Campia and Cosmic Wonder, all those guys that were reporting it, they have their speculations and these rumors and the ideas. I don't think they're playing with us. I think they're just playing with us to say that these guys are wearing this because these guys exist, right? right. If that is the case, we'll see when the movie comes out. I'm not gonna go diving out the window in, 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 in glory that this is happening i don't we don't know but i've said in the past that the batman could be the beginning of the dc universe so i thought it was consistent with one idea we've heard throughout this production which is that when they were like well it's going to have a lot of villain this idea of like the serial killer kind of motif and the I think it's a little, it's an adult decision because it kind of says, listen, we know who these characters are, right? We don't need to give a backstory or an origin story to every single one of these because we've all been here. So if Gotham's going to exist, let's accept that there is a metropolis. Let's accept that these, like that Batman, we are doing this micro story about Batman as a detective learning the ropes, but he's part of this world. And that world includes these other characters who we know and love and it, we can literally leave it at that. We, yeah, we can pull on that string later and maybe do a world's finest and we'll talk about it, something like that. But we don't have to because everyone in the room, we understand enough to know that these characters exist. So let's not pretend like they don't. And I think it's that. And it's great. I think it's a good, mature decision. It respects us as fans that we can... You know, respects I think our you, intellect and, correct. And, and, correct. and our... And our knowledge on these characters is like right. no more can you do these standalone it's not acceptable it's not acceptable these characters that whatever character that you pick out of the comics and want to do they belong to a universe or their right. universe there are characters in there that people like right so, and so there was also the there was also the uh, the goth corp logo sighting which is the company that victor freeze worked for there was like an anarchy so i didn't see that a whole bunch of things you know it fit but it fits with this idea it almost reminds me of like the kind of like the Arca, arkham asylum video game that like sort of acclaimed batman video game series where like they did the same thing they just they built the universe and kind of everyone was a part of it and it was a great series and we didn't need like huge backstories or tangents on all of them they kind of passed through the screen they did camp it's fine it's all you need and, and listen you and i both know that marvel did it best you know, they're the bar. Right. That's what they are. They started this. That genius mind over there, Mr. Feige. You know, and I've been saying this for quite some time. I'm not trying to compare myself to Feige. But I've been saying, I've been wanting this for so, so, so long. And he's doing it. And hopefully, what I hope for is that if there is a moment or the idea to sort of further along and expand on this movie 
if you saw if you see Superman in that film, whoever whoever it may be, it doesn't have to be Cavill. I doubt it will be. But when he when he arrives, it if and if Batman is what it is, what we think it will be, which is amazing. Yeah. Then you know when Superman sets sets on sets on the scene, he stands on the screen and he appears. You know you're gonna get something different. Yeah. And what you've been waiting for, pretty much. So that's what I'm hoping for. Yes, I agree. I agree. So Sony. Would you expect anything else? No. Sony denies nor confirms the reprisals of Spider-Man from either Toby or Andrew. This was not a surprise. This was expected. Why? Because if they would have confirmed it, you know what, Brian? I would have been a lot more worried. Why? Because people are going to want it tomorrow. Right. <laughs> we, because you know, Spider Man into the Spider Verse was dope. It was, it was great. It was great, and it they made it work. It's a cartoon, but it was really well done. Yeah. Given how, and I, and I have to reference them because of the way they did it. The Spider-Verse is an involved thing, meaning there's layers and, and, and events that happen that, uh, that, that occur that leads towards this dilemma or this happenstance with the Spider-Verse. To deliver it in a sloppy way would do that storyline and injustice, unlike it'll it'll be Spider Man three to me, <laughs> you know. And I don't want that to happen. Let it happen slowly, which I think they are. Which I think they are based on what they told us. Because again, if they would have said yes, they are, they forget it. Everybody would have gone jumping out the window with their <laughs> their Spidey webs and 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 start going crazy over this movie coming out like they wanted ASAP. And them denying it sort of curbs that enthusiasm just a bit because we're going to get Spider-Man 3. What, are we forgetting that Peter Parker has been named as Spider-Man and a murderer? How do you resolve that? Right. Not the uh, Spider-Verse. I mean, I think it's a function of this was the original news was leaked maybe by the agents for one of the stars. You get a lot of buzz. They didn't go back to the studio and say, look, Look at how popular this idea is. Great. Our asking rate just went up for, 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 <laughs> for, for, our, for our shoot, our day, our two yeah, days or whatever yeah, we're yeah. going to do. And the studios then comes out and denies it because they're still negotiating and figuring out you know, exactly how this is going to go. But the bottom line is, look, if the, if the report that Kevin Feige wants this is true, it will get over the finish line. It's kind of oh, yeah. that simple. And, and, and to your point, the track record would suggest it will be done in a responsible fashion that we can both applaud what Toby and Andrew did as Spider-Man, but also get something out of it, hopefully, in, in, in whatever film or films or that, that they appear in. So yeah. I, uh, not concerned. I would say, as you said, this is right down the middle for the sequence of how this, this yeah. goes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, I mean, that's a short topic. This is just uh, following up on uh, our last show. Um, another topic that we'll get into a very good topic is uh, Disney's new business. Mm -hmm. With their reorganization, we said it last week, their tunnel vision. Tunnel vision. This is what we got to do. Because right now, all my money from their music parks is stopped. Millions of dollars gone. How many days without these millions and millions of dollars movie theaters? No more billion dollar take. Gone. And based on what's going on in the world, there seems to be not no end in sight, but we still got a lot of work to do. So they said, 
listen, we got to get subscribers because this is the people are home and they're streaming. Look at Netflix. They're the bar. Right. They got millions and millions of subscribers and thousands and thousands of content, you know, and they keep people keep subscribing and people and they Netflix is raking in that dough, whatever it is, although they owe a, a whole ton of, of money because they keep borrowing, I guess, to to make this content because this content is expensive and they got to keep making good stuff. Disney has that money. And so they're putting themselves in direct. I say in the, in the direct side, line of sight of Netflix as their competition. What do you think? So I, I think Netflix is the incumbent bar, but I think Disney has the better IP. The yes. more, re, or so say, the more reliable IP. Yes. I think the most yes. reliable IP in the world is comic book super, the MCU, Star Wars, you know, even things like the Disney animated remakes. These are the most reliable sources of IP out there. There's nothing that Netflix has or can build that is going to reach that overnight. Maybe over and they time, try. But not overnight. And they try. And I also think to your point about, you know, to go back to the point about amusement parks, toys, again, from a competitive standpoint, Disney can budget and make money off of IP differently than any other streaming service because of the toys, because of the amusement parks. And yes, they're not going to make that today. But over five years, ten years, they have that those cash streams, and so those will matter if they have the right stuff in the marketplace. Now, I want to go back to the third point because I think people at home. Um, so I work in the investment world, but people at home may not understand like what they're doing, what their role in is, but they're hearing their name a lot. So, what I would just boil it down to is take the Disney stock tickers D I S, put it on your phone, and just watch it because when they made this announcement the stock was up five percent so that tells you very simplistically the market likes the idea of leaning into digital leaning into disney plus third point came out this week and said double down on that and said specifically with regard to black widow and some of the big superhero properties that are still being pushed out for theatrical release they now want to see some of those brought onto disney plus so that disney can monetize that to me, if you're at home thinking about, well, what does that mean to me? Watch the stock between now and May of next year when Black Widow is supposed to come out. We have no idea what COVID's gonna look like. We have no idea what theaters are gonna look like, but I can tell you this, an activist goal is very simple. They want to change things at the company they invest in so that their investment makes money in a reasonable time frame. It is that simple. If Disney stock keeps going up on its own, there will be less pressure on them to move things like Black Widow to Disney Plus. If their stock underperforms or goes down over the next six months, they may have to consider moves like that to build the stock value back up. So that's why I say very simply, watch the stock. For the next six months, it will tell you how much pressure is on the Disney higher ups to bring some of these main flagship properties into the streaming world. Um, and clearly now there's someone who has a large stake in Disney in third point, who's pushing very hard for that to happen. So uh, to me, that's for the people at home. That's, that's it. Watch what happens with the stock next six months. We could see a very interesting world if Black Widow shows up on Disney plus at some point. And this is not financial advice. No, I'm just telling you to look at it. Just, just look, look at it. it. I'm not saying to buy it or sell it. I'm just saying <laughs> to look at it, to watch it, because the direction will tell you how much pressure, again, is on management to make a change. And the most logical profit-making change they can make is to say, fine, we will give you Black Widow because that will give us revenue now that we would not otherwise have. That's It's really that simple. Yep, yep. But once once they open that, once they go down that route, though, it may not be any going back and that'll be the more interesting thing to have. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, so. That will be an interesting turning point as well. When things are back to normal and movie theaters are open. Um, what sort of content are we going to get? Are we going to continue to get these black widows or these films that we wanted to see on, in, in the theaters? Right. 
I kind of hope it doesn't happen because I, I love the spectacle of these movies. Of and, course. You know, I can't buy a TV. Good. I mean, your VR idea is fantastic at ahead of ahead of the curve. I can't buy a TV big enough to make that experience. Exactly. And I like being able to cheer with people in the theater exactly. too. Exactly. Of yeah. course. I mean, how many times in, 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 in when I'm looking at IG and people post those moments when Doc Strange comes out of that portal and or, or Black Panther and and Cap says. Uh, those moments are you'll always watch it yeah you'll always watch it and to hear the fans go crazy and obviously now we miss that and we hope things get back to normal but you gotta give us at least give us these movies yeah. that we really want to see because at the end of the day we really want to see it if we have to give something up and not see it that's where, you know, I'd, ra I'd rather give up the movie experience because I want to see this movie. Yeah. So that's what they're struggling with. But, you know, the guy saying $3 billion, don't give it to us. Spend it on this. He's telling you straight up and down. Right, because his argument is then if that if you if you put the $3 billion into good content, you'll make the stock market cap will expand by more than three billion so whether it's him or other shareholders you'll get that three billion back plus more if if it's being reinvested in the cost so that's their argument again yeah. not advice that's the argument yeah. they're making with with that call so yes the nerd report this is what we do people <laughs> this is what we do this is what we talk about um I hope with the news that recently came out with with um, with MBJ and and the Justice League being on set of the Batman film, the Justice League, um, and Sony taking the right approach towards not saying yes, this is happening, because then you have crazy people <laughs> telling you now, 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 and it's like not not yet not yet you know there's there's a way to do it so they're taking their time at least is, that's what we think and the, and then the disney man i hope they go the route that we are suggesting they'll have to make and go uh because not for nothing man i miss watching these films yeah how many I, how many times have i seen infinity war or pieces of it all this week. You know, and when I'm looking through Disney Plus, you can't help to pause and be like, damn, do I really want to watch this again? Yeah, I'll watch a little bit. Well, you look, know? I mean, yeah, I mean, there's a reason why if you look on TNT, TBS, USA, FX, why are these the movies that are on all the time? Do you think it's because nobody watches? <laughs> People watch 20, 30 minutes of these. That's what advertisers want. That's what networks want. Of course. And they're rewatchable. That's why they're always, always on. Much to the, annoy much to the annoyance, I'm sure, of some people who don't. Oh, really of course. I really like, want to watch. Can I have a regular film with regular people? <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like but yeah man you know at least give us that that way we can appreciate the regular stuff we could be like yo it's something new but right now is the new is the new stuff that they're supposed to bring out and that yeah. they haven't because of what's going on because of this yeah unfortunately it's always going to be about this because why is business um thank you for joining us hit that subscribe button hit that notification bell share it with your friends um we love talking about this and i hope you guys enjoy it uh send us an email the nerd gen at uh, gmail.com any comments suggestions if you're going to comment comment in this comment section below do you agree with this what is your top five moment um let us know in the comment section and you know we're going to be responding and thank you once again for joining us have a good night be safe and we'll see you next time on the nerd gen report thank you